This is your Tech News Briefing for Monday, November 7th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal, filling in for Zoe Thomas. Last year, we heard these words a lot. There's a big problem with computer chips right now. The global shortage of computer chips is affecting many automakers. Businesses and consumers across the globe experiencing a computer chip shortage. But in a turn of events rippling through the economy, we now have too many chips. In fact, as we've learned during corporate earnings season, this has led semiconductor companies to pull back on spending and put in place hiring freezes, even layoffs. So how do we get to this point and where does the semiconductor industry go next? Here to break it down for us is WSJ Semiconductors reporter, Asa Fitch. Asa, thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here. Thanks. So for those who may not have been following everything going on in the chip industry, can you explain to us why we are suddenly finding ourselves in a chip glut? So there was a surge in demand at the outset of the pandemic And the result of that was chip companies said, oh my gosh, we have to produce as many chips as possible to satisfy this demand. And so the people who are making phones and PCs to cater to all that demand, they were buying lots of chips. They wanted to stock up, essentially. And now demand has fallen off because of the shift back to working in offices and things like that. And those companies, those manufacturers of PCs and phones and things like that, are sitting on huge piles of chips. And those manufacturers are responding by saying, you know, we're not going to buy extra chips. We're just going to use what we have and draw down those inventories over time. But for the chip companies, that's bad because it means new orders aren't coming in. And what have companies been doing in response to all of this? So companies have been essentially becoming much more conservative on how they run their businesses because there's no longer the shortage that we've had over the past couple of years and the markets are trending downward. So a lot of companies have frozen hiring. Some have started layoffs like Intel, Qualcomm froze hiring. They're basically just belt tightening big time. So some of us may have heard that the chip industry is cyclical. Could you briefly explain to us what that cyclicality means and if this particular cycle is any different than previous ones? Yeah, the chip industry is defined by its cycles. It's just a feature of demand for electronic devices that it tends to be very up and down. People buy a lot of stuff, and then when economic times get worse, they decide not to buy the newest, best, latest model. And so when those consumer buying patterns change, the chip companies just have to deal with the rut that results from that. And so it just tends to go up and down a lot. This cycle has been historic in terms of both how high it rose and how long it lasted. And it came from a societal shift. You know, people really started changing how they acted, how they behaved, and they needed more chips and more electronics. So it's in some sense not surprising how high it went and how long it lasted. But it's been a couple of decades since there's been such a huge wave of rising demand that's boosted the fortune of chip makers and now with the downturn is is turning the other way. The last time that there was such a huge surge in demand was actually in the early 2000s when, you know, mobile phones started taking off. So it's really been since then, since we've seen such a big surge. I'm sure a lot of listeners are wondering what this is going to mean going into the holiday season because, you know, tech goods are particularly popular during this time. Yeah, I mean, it could be an interesting holiday season for these tech companies or these producers of PCs and smartphones. Demand is going down. You know, normally there's a surge in demand at the end of the year. That's not really seeming to happen this year. And it just reflects that consumer appetites right now are pretty weak or they're very slow compared to what they've been in the recent past during the early stages of the pandemic. You know, there have been reports about automakers not having enough chips they need. Some automakers have said that they see a chip shortage up until next year, 2023. How does that fit into all of this? Yeah, I mean, the chip industry basically is going from an environment where everything was in shortage and there was just sky-high demand to a more fractured industry where consumer device-linked types of goods and the chips that go into them are going downhill very fast. But certain other pockets in other industries are still very strong, like automotive some things like industrial automation and things like that, those things are still moving forward pretty quickly. So it's really become more of an up and down industry. And the auto industry is still kind of very hungry for chips and in many cases can't get them. And we're still looking at 
production cuts at companies like Toyota because of these persistent issues with semiconductors. So it's not all a bleak picture for everybody. And of course, we have to talk about the CHIPS Act that was passed in the U.S. over the summer. That act was meant to boost domestic semiconductor production. I mean, how does the CHIPS Act play into all of this? So the funding from that, which is about $39 billion in the U.S. for factory building grants for these chip makers, is coming in at a time when these chip makers are seeing declines in demand and a rough picture. And, you know, no manufacturer wants to start building huge plants and increasing output at a time when demand is very low. The fact is that these plants that people are planning won't actually come online and start producing chips for a number of years. They're multi-billion dollar projects that just take a long time to build and develop. So there's kind of a disconnect between the shorter term and the longer term. Longer term, a lot of people think, you know, demand for chips is going to double in the next decade or so to reach more than a trillion dollars of sales in a year. So the longer term picture seems to be good. It's just about how are people adjusting to tactically to the shorter term stress in the market. And that's the sort of balance that a lot of chip executives are trying to strike right now. How do they, you know, limit the kind of capital spending they're doing in the short term? but still expand enough to reap the rewards of rise in demand in the long term. All right, Asa, we're going to have to leave it there. Asa Fitch, Semiconductor's reporter with The Wall Street Journal, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.